There are just some things in society that we can't let go of, but schools and districts can. Columbus Day is one of them. Let's chat about it. Welcome everyone to Zen Math, where we talk about all the things in math ed, all of the things. So as you know, I have a little bit of an issue on the celebrations that are ignored in schools. So things that we should be celebrating like Latinx Heritage Month and Asian American Pacific Islander Month, those celebrations often get ignored in classrooms. But Columbus Day, ugh, somehow Columbus Day still grabs our attention. It always seems to find a way to seep into our classroom activities. Now, definitely a reason being in the US, Columbus Day is a federal holiday. And it's been a federal holiday for decades now. Now, there are some states that don't consider it a paid holiday. Some states don't even recognize it at all. And some states like South Dakota actually celebrate Indigenous Day instead of Columbus Day. And honestly, this federal holiday has been a point of controversy for quite a bit. Now, I'd like to take a look at this issue as educators, not our personal point of view, but a historical point of view. And at the end of this video, I want to provide you with some tips that you can bring back to your classrooms. So for myself, as well as my three boys, we've grown up with Columbus Day activities done in school, right? Where you have to like cut and color in the ships and name the three ships and I don't even remember what else. But there are Columbus Day activities that elementary schools ask the students to do. I'm gonna be quite honest, and you'll probably feel this is a little on brand for me. Um, I actually have my kids not participate in any of those activities. Like they actually sit out of it and they don't do it. And that was my choice as a parent. I'm of the belief that I'm okay if my child gets an F or a zero, if he's standing for something that is purposeful and a value, we did not feel in this household that it should be something to be celebrated. Therefore, it was activities that we felt they didn't have to participate in. And obviously I had conversations with the teachers explaining why they weren't going to participate in some of these activities. Now that was my choice as a parent, but let's look at it in a different lens. Now I want you to ask yourself, again, not as a parent, not your personal opinion, but as an educator, why are we providing these activities in our classrooms? Is it simply because Columbus Day is a federal holiday and you wanna explain why it's a holiday? Are you looking to explain why the students have a day off? Are you fully aware of the history that comes along with Columbus Day and Columbus himself? And if you are aware of that history, are you teaching it to your students? Now, I'm not gonna get into a huge long video on Columbus, so I wanna make this short and sweet. Here are the reasons why people have an issue with celebrating Columbus and Columbus Day. First, let's start off with the, the main point. <laughs> um, it's a false historical perspective. He's celebrated because he is an explorer that discovered the Americas, right? but I want you to take a look at what the word discovery means. Can we really call it discovering the Americas if millions of people were already inhabiting the land? So that's first off, reason number one, it's a false narrative. Second up, he failed. <laughs> he was really looking for India, so technically he botched up his mission. All right, let's get serious and let's talk about our third reason. And that's all about consequences. I mean, he did come bearing gifts, but are we sharing with students that the gifts that he brought to the indigenous people were things like colonization, enslavement, rape, exploitation, diseases like smallpox that killed millions? I mean, he did come bearing gifts, that's what he came with. So I want us to ask ourselves, what are we celebrating? Are we celebrating genocide? Are we celebrating colonization? What is it exactly that we're saying to ourselves, yes, this man should be admired. We should have a day off because of him. And I want students to know about his voyage, parts of it, but I'm going to exclude the rest of it because it makes him sound like a bad guy. I want us as educators to ask ourselves, do you feel okay with this? 
And if this is all about explorers, right? We want to celebrate explorers. Aren't there several other explorers that we can choose from aside from this one? As I was digging into this topic, because, you know, obviously I wanted to do my research, what I found was that there has been some pushback on keeping the federal holiday for Columbus Day. And I didn't realize this until, again, I was digging into it, is that there are some members from the Italian American community. Now, let me be clear. I am not meaning every Italian American, so do not spam me and, you know, let's not do that. Not, I'm not saying that all Italian Americans believe in Columbus Day and want to be associated with him. There are many that don't want to be associated with him and his history. And many Italian Americans believe in the shift to move towards Indigenous Day instead of Columbus Day. So I'm not generalizing and making it an all comment. I'm saying there are some members of that community, like the hardcore fans of Columbus, that feel that by removing Columbus Day, we're taking away a figure from their heritage. And yes, we know that Italian Americans, just like many other marginalized groups, were discriminated against in this country. And yes, you should have a day to celebrate your culture and your heritage. I just don't know if it has to be with this guy. I mean, let's get real. I mean, Italians, you got the whole Renaissance period. <laughs> you have so many artists and explorers. You have so many people to pick from that have made a significant impact in history that we can use to celebrate your culture and your heritage. So let's pick a different guy. We don't need to commemorate this one. We don't need to commemorate Columbus. The point of this is facts matter. And some of us are struggling to figure out what's wrong with this. Like these comments. And if these are the types of comments that people are making, teachers, parents, guardians, we're not doing something right. That means we need to shift. Let's start taking a look at what we could be celebrating. I want you to imagine being an indigenous child, right, student. And in school, you're hearing about and you're celebrating, you're doing activities on the person who set in motion the genocide to your people. Imagine, educators, this makes no sense. Rather than celebrating the conqueror, celebrate the people. Celebrate the beauty and culture of indigenous people. Give them that respect. And as I always say, respect is a 24 seven job, right? In all communities, and for all groups. But give this particular group, give them this day. Take a stand in not allowing or not memorializing a man, this man as a hero, that's caused so much pain to the people that were originally on this land. I mean, this was their freaking land and we're celebrating the colonizer. All right, so as always, I want to relate it back to you. Educators, I want you to think about everything we just chatted about, but I also want you to think about what you can do in your school or your classroom. First up, you have your right as a citizen, as a member of the community, to advocate for Indigenous People Day. But that has to do with legislation, right? So we, as we're waiting for legislation to shift, right? We still have to do things in our schools, in our classrooms. So first up, change the curriculum. Truth matters, facts matter. Stop teaching things that you're not truly aware of. If the only thing you know about Columbus is those three little ships that you're having your students cut out and whatever with the activity, stop. Look into the history of what you are teaching. Second up, activities. If you're going to have activities, let's say you're just gonna go through everything, you're gonna have Columbus Day activities. You're gonna have to talk about the whole truth, not a whitewashed curriculum. You're gonna have to tell them the real deal. And definitely for upper elementary, middle school, high school, those conversations and discussions are important to have with older students. That is a part of history that they need to and should be aware of. I'm not recommending talking to a kindergartner about genocide. Number three, provide students an opportunity to appreciate culture. So you may have to do some digging for this. We're looking for activities, but let me tell you, 
If you just spent all this time on Teachers Pay Teacher hunting down activities for Columbus Day, mm, you can spend that same amount of time hunting down some activities celebrating indigenous culture. All right, fourth one, I think this one is the most important. It doesn't have to be nationwide for you to affect change in your school or your district. Talk to the leaders. Have a discussion around this. Sure, okay, maybe your state still celebrates Columbus Day as it's, you know, holiday and you have the day off. But in your building, in your school, you can make an active decision as a community to not have celebrations around this man, but to instead have celebrations around indigenous people. So what that the state or the federal government called it something else, call it whatever you want and make that a point to share out with families, to share out with students. You can make change here. Honestly, we have to. We cannot wait for these larger systems to catch up to us. Let's start off where we are. Change the activities in your classrooms, change your curriculum so it's not whitewashed and it actually gives an accurate portrayal of what happened. So change your activities, change your curriculum, change how you celebrate it in your building, in your district. The gist is change, right? And understand the reason for this change. There are many people in history that did crappy things, all right? But we're not celebrating them all as a national holiday. We're not having our little five-year-old color pictures. We're not having our fifth graders memorize little lines and rhymes to remember dates on when he sailed the ocean blue. That is not what's happening with other people that did crappy things in history. Instead, we talk about that history, we have a conversation about it, we learn from it, we move forward. That's what should be happening here. So I hope that you please consider adjusting what you are doing on this federal holiday. That's a wrap for me, everyone. I'll see you all next time.